Healthy soils are fundamental for healthy farming systems. There are many ways of checking the health of your soils. Sometimes it's just as simple as knowing what to look for as you walk across your paddocks. This video is the second in a series of three that condenses years of agronomist experience down into some easy to use strategies. The first video looked at what you can tell from a rapid glance at a paddock. Things like the colour, patches or variable plant growth across the paddock. In this video, we will look a bit closer at what plants are growing in the paddock and what they can tell us about the likely soil conditions. We will take a look at common symptoms in subclover and weed species that can indicate different nutrient levels and soil conditions. A lot of pasture observations are best made in late winter to early spring, when plants have started growing again but are not yet reproductive. If you notice the pasture is predominantly grass with little or no legume species, it could signify a few things. One, it could indicate a deficiency in phosphorus and or molybdenum. Two, it might be the soil is acidic, which inhibits legume nitrogen fixation. Three, annual clover has been inappropriately managed, causing the seed bank to be driven down, like cutting hay in late maturing varieties or cropping over more than two years or commonly leaving too much dry litter at the autumn break, which reduces germination. You can test to see if this is the case in a few different ways. You could soil test with reference to phosphorus, pH and aluminium. You could tissue test for molybdenum in late winter or early spring. And you could assess the amount of dry litter in late summer, early autumn, as practiced in the pasture paramedic tool. Generally, clover plants in the pasture sward don't show many signs of being starved of nutrients. When it does start to show signs of poor health, the deficiency is generally quite severe. Sometimes in early spring, when clover is growing well, you can see stunted or dark green leaves of subclover plants. This is likely a sign of phosphorus deficiency. As a rule of thumb, some clover leaves should be about the size of a 20 cent piece. Another common issue you might see in subclover is bronzing around the leaf margins, which develops into pale grey spots. This is likely a sign of potassium deficiency. It can be easy to confuse these symptoms with red-legged earth mite damage. The trick is to check where on the leaves damage occurs. Potassium deficiency markings will be seen on the margins, while red-legged earth mite damage will be across the whole leaf. If clover is exhibiting symptoms that may indicate a phosphorus or potassium deficiency, you should consider testing to confirm your observations. This can either be done with a soil test or using fertilizer strips. See the information section below for a fact sheet on fertilizer test strips. A third common issue for subclover is stunted plants that are a pale green in color. This could be a sign of soil acidity, which is associated with high soil aluminium. It could also be a soil-borne disease, with the four most likely pathogens being Phytophthora, Pythium, Aphromyces and Rhizoctania. The first step with identifying the cause is a root inspection. If the roots are stunted and have less fine roots, it is more likely to be hostile soil conditions, in which case you can take a soil test with reference to pH and aluminium or put out a lime test strip. Just note that lime responses are generally not seen in the first year, especially if the lime has not been incorporated. If on the other hand, the symptoms are caused by disease, plant roots are more likely to be yellow in color and have reduced or pruned branches. If this is the case, you could take a predictor B test to identify the pathogen present. You could also put out a test strip of foliar fungicide such as phosphoric acid. Throughout the growing season, you might notice increased growth and high fertility indicator weeds growing on stock camps. Stock camps commonly have higher nutrient levels as a result of animal defecating and urinating in that area, and it can be bared out in autumn from grazing pressure. If this is the case, you are likely to see weed species such as capeweed, nettles, barley grass, and marshmallow. These species particularly favor high nitrogen levels, so their presence can imply high soil nitrogen. Barley grass can also indicate high levels of phosphorus in the soil. A really simple way of testing to see if there are nutrients being concentrated around the stock camps is to compare the leaf blade size of grass from the camp with the same grass species elsewhere in the paddock. On the flip side, if your paddock has low fertility, you are more likely to see weeds such as flatweed, sweet vernal grass, bent grass, fog grass, onion grass, and sorrel during the growing season. 
General low fertility can be indicated by the presence of bent grass and fog grass. These can be signs of low levels of especially nitrogen and also phosphorus, potassium, sulphur and soil acidity. Low soil nitrogen can be indicated by the presence of silver grass. Low phosphorus can be indicated by the presence of onion grass. Low potassium can be indicated by the presence of flatweeds, sorrel and sweet vernal grass. This is especially common on light textured soils as potassium leaches and on paddocks repeatedly cut for hay or silage when nutrients are being exported. Low pH or acid soils can be indicated by the presence of sorrel. In more acidic soils, nitrogen fixation in legumes declines. So where there is soil acidity issues, you will often see low soil nitrogen indicator species. If you suspect there is a soil acidity issue, you can get further clarification from a simple in-paddock pH test. pH test kits are available at your hardware or farm supplier store. There are pictures and key identification characteristics for all these species in the pasture paramedic booklet. To confirm your suspicions around soil nutrient levels, you should consider taking a soil test with reference to the nutrients in question. You could also put out test strips of fertiliser and or lime to see if there is a pasture response. We hope this video has helped you understand what different pasture species and symptoms might be indicating about your soil health. Don't forget that if you need a refresher on pasture identification, please refer to the pasture paramedic manual or check out the link in the information section below.